Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Thanks for joining me today. Um, today's video we're just going to do, uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of the upcoming summon event. So I got the details for you guys right now. So on Friday, May 26th, we're planning to launch a 10x event uh, for summoning champions from Ancient, Sacred, and Void Shards. So we got Sifi, Archbishop, Pinthroy, Kyoku, uh, Martyr, one of the few counterattack champions, uh, Ursula the Mourner, which is a great revive epic, Seeker, one of the uh, premium uh, must-have clan boss champions, Mausoleum Mage, which is a budget cleanser, and Grizzle Jarl, which is a little bit of a budget uh, cleanser as well. Um, so Kyoku has like similar um, passive to Seeker, which is the defense up, um, but it's also like a mix between Seeker and like, um, I guess, um, Sandlast Survivor, which has the ally protection. Um, she also places the uh, block damage on herself. It's an interesting support kit. She's actually really strong. Um, she just hasn't really found too much play in like arena or anything like that, but she can be pretty good. Martyr, attack down, defense down, um, defense up, I believe, defense up, and counterattack. So one of the few champions that have counterattack, team counterattack, so she's really solid as well. Pinthor is actually really good in the Hydra. Uh, he places block buffs and I believe uh, supports your team with shields and healing. Um, but the main champions we want to talk about here is Sifi, the Lost Bride. Super old, like kind of old, super old actually. Uh, Void Champion, so we've got, got one right here, uh, Sifi the Lost Bride, so there she is, she's super OP right now in live arena, I mean she's always been good in arena, she's one of the main main uh, defensive champions, offensive champions in uh, arena, all the way to the top of platinum for a really long time, she's fell off um, to top of platinum um, for a little bit, there was a little bit of time where she fell off and then now she's back because um, of Terrace Marichka. Um, so she brings a bunch of buffs um, and obviously supports your team. But we'll go over her kit real quick here. So her A1 is super ridiculous. A1 has a 100% chance fully booked to sleep your target when they're above 50% turn meter. It cannot be resisted. And because of this, she doesn't need accuracy, which is super busted. And if it's below 50%, then she does a small heal for your team, which is fine. But it's a super busted A1 because it gives her tons of control. Um, yeah, it gives her tons of, tons of control. 100% control. Um, her A2, Whirlwind Romance, 4 turn cooldown with fully booked. 3 buffs, uh, turn meter boost. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's just an insane move. It's, it powers your team, speeds them up, gets them to cycle through their turns and all that jazz. I believe she was nerfed in the past. I think this used to be like a three turn cooldown. It's So yeah, it's a four turn cooldown now, but yeah, it's still insanely strong. Tons of buffs, turn meter, speeds up your team. Let's go, right? Her uh, revive single target four turn cooldown, revive single target 55% HP, full turn meter. So they're guaranteed a turn, not 100% turn meter, it's full, full turn meter. Places a 50% increase attack, so you're going to buff your nuker, you're going to give them crit rate, which is not as important, and then they're going to be able to smack right away. The 55% HP is uh, important because she, make, she basically utilizes this with Rotos, which has a passive that prevents any hit from dealing more than 50% of his HP. So at 55% HP, that will leave Rotos with 5% HP even if he gets hit somehow, some way. So this move, really, really annoying. Uh, four turn cooldown, so not super, super fast. Uh, and it's only a single target revive, so it's not it's the most insane revive ever. Uh, just because it is on a four turn cooldown, but obviously going to be very very strong her passive heals each ally by 10 percent of their max hp at the start of their turn so it's kind of like a sill ish move sill of the drakes but sill works off her own turn uh, this is off uh, each ally's turn has a 40 percent chance of removing freeze and fear debuffs from each ally at the start of the turn this is actually something that we don't talk about too much but it's actually a really good support skill to basically soft cleanse some of these annoying debuffs 
freeze and fear although not super common uh can can come into play for example like terrace terrace can fear you and yeah then you know freeze obviously not very common but you know against people that use frostbite set or something cute like that then obviously this can be helpful and then it mixes really well with rotos because it fully re fully cleanses him at the start of his turn if they're on the same team so this is actually huge making rotos basically unstoppable when paired together and aura 80 percent resistance in all battles very very strong one of the strongest uh res in all battles auras uh good hp good defense insane top speed 114 comes with a little bit of resistance as well uh in the super stack undead horde faction so cfi we're getting a 10x uh, we're getting a 10x cfi on void shards coming up on um friday is she worth pulling of course she is an excellent excellent champion um i'll show you guys my cfi i recently rebuilt her that's kind of why i'm making a video too and it kind of just lines up with this upcoming 10x i recently rebuilt her i made her uh fast in a four-piece stone skin this is as fast as I can make her with the current gear that I have. Um, I don't, uh, it was, um, I didn't want to remove the gear from my Arbiter. And here's the reason why. I, my, most, some people might be in this position where they have Sifi and Arbiter. And they're trying to choose which one do I give my best gear on. Basically, they do kind of the same thing. They boost your team. Arbiter is a little bit easier to use because there's more attack based nukers. She's a speed lead by herself. Um, but Sifi is also a very good speed lead and Sifi actually has a higher base speed than Arbiter at 114 versus 110. So she actually has a slightly higher base speed. This comes into play when Laura Steel, things like Laura Steel, um, you know, obviously increase your base speed multiplier and, uh, thing, um, you know, speed sets and, and stuff like that. They add up a little bit. So Sifi will have the edge with the same gear compared to Arbiter. So Sifi has potential to be faster. But Arbiter is a bit easier to use because she comes with her own speed aura for the arena and there's more attack based nukers. So if you have the if you have the question of CFI versus Arbiter, you basically have to look at your nukers and see which one you have available. Is my is your best nuker a defense based nuker? Then go with that. If your best nuker is a attack based nuker, then go with Arbiter. So for me, my best nukers are attack based nukers. So I'm still stuck with Arbiter for now. Um, and the speed lead actually comes in comes in handy as well because I don't have to use another speed lead champion. So that's why my CFI is actually not in my fastest gear. She's actually in a four piece stone skin gear. Uh, four piece stone skin basically just allows her to get a turn. Uh, her turn can be used to sleep a you know enemy minion. It could be somebody like a warlord or a Yumiko, um, or it can help boost my team, for example. So I just wanted to give her um, her turn for sure. Uh, another popular set is protection set because she gives so many buffs. You can have a pretty good chance at protecting your, your buffs when, when you gear her in protection set. Uh, I do have some protection gear, but uh, not super fast. So I didn't uh, commit to the protection gear. Um, another way to gear Sifi is just full speed. So you just give her all your best speed gear. You make her as fast as possible. She cycles through her skills, boosts your team, buffs your team, controls the other team. Very, very good champion for full speed. Um, you could also build her in swift parry. This way she gets an extra turn. If she dies, you can revive, revive your reviver, and then your reviver revives your team. So that's another way to build her as well. Um, yeah, so generally like she's just a really strong champion you can make her really slow with resistance you can make her really slow with six piece stone skin um i think generally for general purpose use building her fast is probably like 100 percent. yes i'm going to make her fast how fast that's going to be up to you and and basically up against your arbiter uh, whether you use one or the other more um so yeah anyways so for me yeah, so this is my Sifi. I got four piece stone skin. She's 354, which is just fast enough, faster than my Warlord, so I can boost him up. Um, and uh, yeah, masteries I got basically like reviver masteries. So you end up with timely intervention to speed her up when uh, basically your, your team's in trouble. Spirit Haze, speed her up when uh, people are dead. Lasting gifts to extend duration on her buffs. Laura Steel for increased stats. 
and then these will boost her uh, her heals and then you get extra turn meter here to speed her up again so yeah these are these are my masteries for mainly arena i only really use her for arena um she can be used for clan boss yes she can be tuned for clan boss i suppose um and for hydra i found her not super effective i wouldn't i don't really use her for hydra at all but i know like in less uh more limited roster you could use her um you know she brings a lot healing boost all the buffs and so forth but she brings no damage so she's purely for support and her single revive is not as good in hydra uh, obviously you want a team revive in hydra uh, but she's still going to be very serviceable there as well all right okay so let's quickly jump into um, a couple battles here. Um, I'm gonna make. Uh, I haven't made a team yet, so I'm just gonna make a team, and then uh, we'll jump into some battles. So I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So this is the team I put together. So I'm gonna run um, kind of like an old style team here against Hegemon. So basically, Molly takes the hit from Hegemon to start the fight. She boosts the turn meter of everybody, and then we will likely get a turn. Uh, like I said, my CV is 354. But we're up against a Arbiter with a Duchess lead, which doesn't make too much sense. Harma is my defense-based nuker. Harma could be anybody. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, use Harma, Harma first. Let's see how it goes. And then uh, we'll scale her down um, if it proves uh, too easy. All right, let's jump into it. So we're going to get hit first by Hegemon. It's going boost to our, boost our team. So we try to boost our team, control their team with the molly, and then, uh, oh look, so they're A1, let's see which one wants to sleep, I'm going to sleep the Arbiter, she's, she's slept, and I'm going to unload on the team, doesn't kill everybody. And, doesn't matter, everybody's provoked. more sleeping from the a1 super like it's just super annoying a1 the a1 like makes her kit like that much stronger if she didn't have the a1 she'd definitely be much much weaker um okay let's do this one this one we're gonna get outsped right most likely arbiter lead with an arbiter um we don't use molly this time let's see if we can land the warlord the lockout make things safe or do we want to make it a little bit harder? <clears throat> All right, let's try to warlord. It doesn't mean that we go first. That's the thing. Let's see what happens here. He doesn't have. Oh, we go first even without the speed lead. So that means our Sifi is thirty speed faster than his arbiter, at least, to offset the aura from the arbiter, because we have no aura. All right, so we can sleep somebody. We can't because everyone has low turn meter. And we'll kill somebody. Wow, we don't kill anybody. And then we'll just put on auto. Yeah, so having a fast CV is going to be really good, especially in live arena, because you're not guaranteed to have a speed lead all the time. So just having a fast CV will help you uh, get a turn. Um, even with the speed lead, you might still be faster in them. Like for example, this case, the this opponent has an arbiter lead, but my CF is still faster than their arbiter with an arbiter lead. So you know, and it actually happens quite a bit in arena because your teams are not going to be perfect in arena. Um, so jump out. Uh, like this team would be very tough. It'd be hard for Harima to actually kill them. All right, so in this team, we're going to get locked out, and then bad things are going to happen to us, especially with the Valk. So you still have to be, like, a little bit selective of what you're doing. Uh, let's look for another fight. Let's do this one. Let's fight this one. Uh, okay, same kind of idea here. We're going to go... F I guess we're going to go first again. Yeah, we're going to go first again. So here you actually have the option to A1 sleep somebody or you can full buff. So if we buff, it looks like the Cirrus might actually um, might actually get a turn. But I think if we turn meter boost, the Warlord will get a turn. Okay, so that's there it is. 
So I did see that the term mirrors were getting kind of close. So that means uh, Sirius could have had a chance to go first. So if we buff and she script, uh, stripped, it would have been not so nice for everybody. Okay, and then it's kind of over from here. I think I'll make a team that is uh, slightly um, less impressive. So, all right. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so here's my Sifi with a speed lead. We're going to bring some debuffs here, and then here's my defense-based nuker. We're going to bring some debuffs here because they don't have sheep going on, so we'll just play around with this team a little bit. It's kind of like an unconventional team, but it's a free champion, two fusions, and Sifi. So I guess it's maybe more attainable, I guess. Uh, we You can definitely use like Cirrus uh, instead of Ramantu. Um, but my Ramantu is geared in stone skin, so he is well geared for this, and they will be protected from the Sifi and Tormund, at least for a little bit. So let's jump into this. I have no idea how it's going to go, so let's see what happens. So they go first. So kind of wanted to show uh, what would happen if we lose the speed lead. All right, we get the we get the AOE going on, and then we use Helicast's busted uh, block damage move. Okay, since they have no strip, it's going to be really hard for them to deal with. There it is. There it is. As long as you have the block debuffs going on with the shield, it's can't really do anything about it. Okay. Nice. I'll cast the nuker in this in this uh, in this team. So, and now I can lock down the Sifi. You see how strong the Sifi's A1 is? Absolutely like disgusting disgusting she has a revive my health is not like super strong it might actually have some problems killing uh this team but uh i think it should be okay i hope nice lucky stun nice all right get the block debuffs up can we kill somebody? <laughs> okay. So remember, sleep. Uh, sleep. If you uh, interact with them uh, while they're sleeping, they wake up. So not always the best uh, debuff, but it's good in a. It's good if you have a lot of the the sleep debuff, of course. So I right, just get the block debuffs back up. I want to hit and kill this Arbiter. There we go. All right. Now we can do something. All right. And he somehow resisted my um, my move. I don't know how that happened. Okay. That means we have to kill the second body. But basically, this is kind of what happens. So. Set it on auto. But as you can clearly see, like CPU is just the engine for this team, powering them up using the A1 to control their uh, support champions like Arbiter and Sifi. And then we used a non-traditional um, defense-based damage dealer in Helicath with basically not even, like barely even damage gear. I wouldn't even say it's damage gear. So um, I'll go over some of the champions real quick. We can just have a quick look. But anyways, hopefully this showed you guys a uh, quick snapshot of how good Sifi can be. Sifi is obviously insanely good with Rodos. Um, and of course, like I can show you how good he she is. Um, let's see here. So here's my Hellcath. You know, he wasn't even geared in damage gear. So this isn't even my uh, proper Hellcath. So this is what he was geared in. There's like, this is what he was geared in. Um, and yeah, all this stuff doesn't really matter because it's just my arena stuff but this is my cfi and then this is my hellcat a little bit of a surprise there i guess um uh, i think i'll show you guys a quick fight with uh rodos i guess i'll show you guys a quick fight with rodos and cfi together basically being uh absolute animals um so let's see here so how do we want to make it as easy for them as possible I guess a cleanser would make it pretty easy. Let's bring Necrit. So I'll show you guys how easy it can be with uh, CP Rodos, I guess. Although... Oh, 
Although it's probably just like my Rodos just running the show here, right? There's Sifi with the A1 controlling everything. Probably could have just slept Mithral there when it was off uh, auto. There she is. Even Mithrala can be um, slept. So, yeah, so it's just Rotos doing Rotos things. But basically, Rotos cannot be controlled when they're on the same team as Sifi. Anyways, folks, hopefully you guys enjoyed that uh, video and a quick showcase on Sifi the Lost Bride. She's incredibly good. Good luck if you guys are pulling for her. Um, she is worth it for sure. And um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you guys in the next video.